let's talk about types of audit evidence. We talk about this in the audit evidence uh, less, I was going to say lecture and lesson at the same time, right? We talk about this in that lesson, but it's never hurt to talk about it again, specifically because in this lesson, we're talking about a lot of different testing methods and those actual substantive testing, those actual procedures we do are going to have to do a lot with these particular documents and these pieces of evidence. Let's start off. And what is the remittance advice? Well, when you see this, this, well, first I've got the source. Where, where does it come from? It is coming from the payer to the payee. So if I buy something, I am the payer, I am paying, and I'm sending it to the person I bought, whatever this is from. And what is the use of this document? It is to verify payments have been made as agreed. Sounds good. And just as a note, if you want additional clarification on these pieces of audit evidence, definitely go check out the audit evidence lesson. Want to make sure, being efficient here, we're not mentioning something 15 times in depth. This is just a, a nice overview to remind you of what's going on. What is the shipping document? Well, this is going to, the source here is the supplier and it's going to get sent to the client. Now, if I buy some inventory as the client, I'm ABC company and I buy something from a supplier and I buy some goods to then sell to my customers. The supplier who I buy the goods from is going to send me the shipping document. And the auditor can use this to verify the accuracy of invoices and to track inventory. Now, just keep in mind, the auditor can do this, but also the company can do this. The company, ABC company, has an internal audit division. They've got also, just accountants and accountants are there to not only keep records, but to reconcile and verify amounts. So obviously in a perfect world, we wouldn't need accountants if uh, everyone was ethical and they actually could do a perfect job, but there is going to be an attempt made. So th everything we see here, this use, this is use for the company as well as for the audit. The receiving report, this is going to go from the client to the supplier. This is going to be used to reconcile the supplier invoices with the goods received. This is going to be right basically verifying, you know, this is what we received and we can tie that together. Say, okay, we received all the possible inventory we needed. The bill of lading, what source is this? Well, this is gonna come from the client's supplier. So we're buying goods from them. See multiple documents involved in maybe, you know, one transaction. And this is gonna be used to verify the receipt of goods and the quantity. I would definitely, for example, memorize the uses of all of these. That is gonna be important because you'll see in Sims and multiple choice questions, you're going to see examples of where, okay, you're going to need to test and use these particular pieces of documentation in, in order to give a, a proper, accurate test. Purchase order, the client's purchasing department is going to issue this and say, hey, supplier, we want to buy some planks of wood for you from you. And we're going to use this to verify that all purchases are documented and authorized. Obviously, that's important as well, because we don't want to just issue purchase orders for a bunch of goods without them being authorized, because then I could work for a company and just buy a bunch of uh, goods on the client's dime, on the company's dime, and then use them for myself. The vendor invoice, this comes from the supplier. So when you buy, let's say, planks of wood, the supplier is going to send you an invoice, say, pay us, you know, pay us X amount of dollars. It's going to have a amount, the quantity, the dollar amount, everything like that. This is going to be used to support the existence of a vendor transaction. Next up, we have the packing slip. Now, this is going to come from the client supplier. This is going to verify the accuracy of the goods shipped. You'll find this in the box, and it'll say, in this box, you should find 10 planks of wood. Lastly here, the bank statement, this comes from the client's bank, and this is going to be used to tie out the cash account. Bank statement, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it, well, you should be pretty familiar with it because guess what? You deal with cash yourself personally. Hey there. Are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material. We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.